So we've seen that our households um, produce uh, have a productive capacity uh, for the amount of services that they can uh, produce and sell. So now what we need to examine is how they are able to actually find customers to sell these services. Um, and we know that the customers are other households who are looking to buy services. Um, so we have to study um, the product market where households sell services to other households. And of course, this is going to be a matching market. And as a result of this matching structure, we'd always have some idleness uh, on the market, some slack if you want. So the sellers, uh, we've seen that some households are going to sell services. Um, so they produce and sell services. And um, the amount of services that the households can produce a productive capacity, uh, we denote it by K. Okay, so, the, so this is the amount of services uh, sold by one household, but because um, all the households are the same and there's a mass one of households, this is also the aggregate uh, amount of services that are for sale in this economy. So K is of uh, is our uh, productive capacities. So how are this? Uh, how do households find customers? Uh, well, what happens is that because you know this is not a Valrasian market, it's a matching market. So you know it's complicated um, to find the services uh, you like. So if you if you're consumers, you have specific needs. You need a shop that's open at a specific time that provides specific amount of services, specific location. Uh, so, you know, there's all this complexity that we see, of course, in the real world. Uh, so households, when, uh, you know, then, then they need to do something to be able to find the right uh, service provider. And so we'll assume that households, um, each household, to buy the amount of services they want, is going to visit other households. Okay. Um, so households visit um, shops uh, to buy services. And the amount of visits that one individual household um, does is a V. And uh, so that's, you know, for one household, but of course, because all the households are the same, there's a mass one of households that also the aggregate number of visits on the product, on the on the market that we are looking at. And so then, uh, based on the number of services that are available for sale, based on the number of visits that households do to shops to buy services, we'll figure out the number of trades that are realized. Um, and so the number of trades, so a trade here is one service being uh, bought by one household. Number of trades, which is also a number of services uh, sold. Um, and also the number of services bought, and it also the output. Uh, the output of the model will, deno will denote it by Y, as is customary for output. 
Uh, and so that's because you know all the out the only goods that are produced here are services, and services are going to be consumed only if they are sold. And so output is always the amount of goods that are uh, you know that are produced and, and purchased. Um, so that here output and number of trades are just one and the same. So we'll denote it by Y. And because we are working with a matching market, the key assumption is that uh, output is determined because output just the number of trades is determined by a matching function. And we saw that there are a bunch of matching functions that you can use. Uh, a matching function has to satisfy a certain number of properties, you know, increasing both arguments, um, constant return to scale. These are the main ones. And so there are several uh, functions that satisfy these uh, properties. Um, so here we need to pick one of these functions. And um, because we are working with a static model, we know that the number of trades cannot be more than uh, the minimum of the number of uh, visits and the number of services that are available uh, for sale. That, that wouldn't be possible. Um, so, you know, we have to make sure that the matching function has to satisfy this condition. Um, and so what we're going to use here is to use a constant elasticity of substitution matching function, because we know that by construction is going to satisfy that requirement that the number of trades is less than both sides of the market, the number of visits uh, by households. Um, and the number of services sold on the other end by the household. So we're going to assume that uh, the output is determined by a CES, constant elasticity of substitution matching function. And so we talked about the Cobb Douglas matching function. It is sometimes uh, a bit easier to use, but the problem with Cobb Douglas is that it doesn't satisfy this requirement uh, that the number of trades is a minimum, is at most. Uh, you know, can never be more than the number of visits and uh, the number of uh, of services sold. And, um, and um, so it's not convenient to use a Cobb Douglas function with a static model. So that's why we use a CS uh, matching function instead. That would be uh, that would be quite convenient here. So that's because it satisfies y less than the mean of um, k and v, just by construction. Um, so because it's determined by a CS matching function, what we'll have is that y is going to be. Um, so we know that the matching function is always a well-behaved function that takes as argument the number um, of goods that are sold. You know that the, the, if you want the number of sellers and the number of buyers and gives us the number of trades. So here, uh, the number of things that are for sale, um, it's k. The productive capacity of the households. This is the total number of services that are available for sale. The total number of visits that are trying to uh, find services. That's v. And then uh, the CS form is that we have an exponent uh, minus gamma here, minus gamma here, minus one over gamma here. Uh, okay, and that's just the CS uh, functional form that we saw. So that's going to be a key assumption here. Okay, so this is telling us that the output in this model is going to be determined by the number of services for sale and the number of visits to, um, to the shops. And um, parametric restrictions that we discussed when we use CES, it's, we have gamma must be strictly greater than zero. So next, we have our matching function. Uh, next step is to introduce a key variable in the model. Uh, that will determine a lot of what's going on. That's the market tightness here. Uh, so this is a product market, you know, it's a product market tightness, but it's you know, it's really an aggregate uh, market. It represents you know uh, household sell labor services. So you can think of it as a blend of a product market labor and 
labor market. So the market tightness, we need to define it because it's going to determine everything here. So um, market tightness, I'm going to denote it by X. So usually it's common to denote tightness by theta, but once we build a more complex model with a product market and labor market that's separate, I'll use theta for the labor market tightness, which is a common notation. So here to separate, to allow to have a different notation on the labor market product market, I'm going to denote the market tightness here by X. But the market tightness, it's always the same. It's always number of um, buyers divided by number of sellers. Uh, or if you want, it's always the ratio of the two arguments in the matching function. So here, number of uh, buyers is V, is the number of visits that determines the number of services that the, in the aggregate that households are willing to buy. The number of things that are sold is um, K, the aggregate number of services that are for sale. And so tightness is a ratio of these uh, two things. The, over -k. the reason we care so much about our market tightness is that it's going to determine all the trading probabilities in the model. So in particular, uh, the selling probability is going to be determined by tightness. So what is the selling probability here? So our selling probability, as usual, it's denoted by F, it's going to be determined by tightness, F divided by X. So um, selling probability is just the chance that a service is sold. And so it's the number of services that are sold, Y divided by the number of services that are for sale, K. Then once we use <coughs> the expression for the matching function, we get K minus gamma plus V minus gamma, minus one over gamma. Divided by K. And then of course, um, we can use, we know that that, uh, we know that the matching function has a CRS property. Uh, so what I can do instead uh, of dividing the whole function by K and the CRS property is something uh, that uh, we verify that's uh, easy to verify with the CES function. But so instead of dividing the whole thing by K, what I can do is divide each argument by K by CRS property of the CES matching function. So it's K divided by K minus gamma plus V divided by K minus gamma minus one over gamma. Uh, and so here it's by CRS. Uh, and so this simplifies a whole lot. K divided by K is just one, and V divided by K is just our market tightness. And so that's just, uh, this is just our selling uh, probability. Uh, and I mean, you know, because the CES matching function satisfies all the right properties, um, we know that the trading probabilities are going to satisfy the right properties, but we can see it here immediately. So in particular, the thing that's key is that the selling probability f of x is increasing in x, um, which, which you can see here um, immediately because you compound x minus gamma is decreasing in x, but then you have a power minus one over gamma, which is going to uh, transform a decreasing function into an increasing function. Um, so in particular, here we see that f prime of x is positive. So when the market is tighter, the probability to sell a service is going to go up, as you know, as it should in any matching model. Um, you can also see that when the tightness is zero, uh, if the tightness is zero, x minus gamma goes to infinity, and therefore f of x goes to zero. So if there is the tightness is zero, the probability to sell a service is zero. Uh, you can see it here um, as well. Um, uh, another interesting result on the um, on the selling probability is that uh, f 
when tightness is infinite. So if you have an infinite tightness, it's going to be one side. If your tightness is infinite, uh, you will sell all your services for sure. So these are uh, three useful results. And the, the key interpretation to take away from this though is that because f of x uh, is increasing in x, when the market is tighter, you're more likely to sell uh, your services. Okay, so it's a, when the market is tighter, it's good to be a seller. And so you, you know, you're going to sell on average a larger share of your services when you have a tighter uh, market. Okay, so next we can move on to the uh, buying probability, which is the other uh, important probability here. Let's see. So as usual, we denote it by Q. Um, it's a function of the tightness, Q of X. So the buying probability is a probability that a visit to a shop is successful. Now the number of visits that are successful is Y, the output. The number of total visit is V. So this gives you the probability that your visit is successful. And then we can uh, once again use the expression for the matching function to get the output. So this is what, what we have. And then, of course, we know that we can bring V inside the matching function because this matching function has constant returns to scale. So instead of dividing the whole thing by V, I can divide each argument by V. So again, that is uh, by CRS. And here, what do we get there? So K over V is actually the inverse of uh, the market tightness because the market tightness is V over K. This is one over X minus gamma plus one minus one over gamma. That's just by definition. So we can simplify this as one plus X gamma minus one over gamma. That's Q of X. And uh, so a couple of properties that uh, appear immediately for the um, buying probability. So first of all, you can see that um, Q of zero. So if the tightness is zero, uh, the buying probability is going to be one. So this is obvious if there are no other, um, if the tightness is zero, there are no other um, buyers on the market. And so if you visit somebody for sure, you'll be able to buy uh, for sure, you're going to be able to buy the goods that you want. When the tightness is infinite, the buying probability tends to zero. Uh, you see it when X is infinite, uh, Q is going to be zero. So if you have to compete with infinitely many other buyers, then the odds that your visit will be successful tends to zero. As usual, Q prime of X, uh, the derivative of Q, we can see that here we have a decreasing function in X. So Q prime of X is going to be negative. Um, so what that means that in the same way that you're more likely to sell in a tighter market, you're less likely um, to be able to buy in a tighter market. So this is a general property of a uh, matching market that um, when the market is uh, tighter, which means you have more buyers relative to sellers, it's a better time to be a seller. You sell with more, a higher probability and you're less likely to be able to buy. And when the tightness is low, which means that you have more sellers relative to buyers, it's a good time to be a buyer. You're more likely to have uh, successful uh, visits and you're less like, you know, as a seller, you're less likely to be able to sell. Um, So these are, uh, these are the key, our key probabilities uh, in the matching market, and we'll use them uh, repeatedly in uh, almost all aspects of the model.